today I will show you how to use the UAT lock. It is similar to the U100, I read the instructions and the only difference is in the transferring position. If you have the UAT lock you have to rotate the racking handle between 8 and 9 o'clock and if you are using the U100 lock the racking handle must be between 8 and 10 o'clock. All the other things are the same, even the examples, you can download the manuals and check them for yourself. Now I'm knitting on all needles and I want to transfer the stitches on one of the beds. Stop before knitting the last row and increase the stitch size on both sides with 2 to 4 clicks on the dial, this depends on the yarn that you are using. You may need to increase the stitch size only on the back lock or even make it smaller on the front lock. Now you can knit the last row. Put all its springs close to the ends of the beds. If there are weights attached to the knitting, the transferring process will be easier. Take the transferring clock and set the lever to 4. It will always transfer the stitches from the side with the lever to the other side and you always have to move it in the direction of the arrow. So, for example, if I want to transfer all stitches from the front to the back pad, I need to place the lock on the right side of the machine and slide it to the left. If I want to transfer all stitches from the back bed to the front bed, I have to rotate it, place it on the left side and slide it to the right. But before that you have to rotate the racking handle anti-clockwise to the proper transferring position. To find the right position for your machine, raise several empty needles on the front and on the back bed of the machine. The needles on the back bed must be almost touching the needles on the front bed, they have to be very close to each other. Then place the lock and slide it to transfer the stitches. In this case I transferred the stitches to the front bed. After transferring you have to check for dropped stitches and rehung them. Now I'm transferring the stitches to the back bed. Perfect, there are no dropped stitches. When the lock is set to 4 you can transfer the stitches only if the needles are arranged in such a way so the yarn lies in a zigzag manner between the two needle beds. Now I'm knitting only on the front bed and I want to transfer the needles on both beds in one to one division. Stop before knitting the last row and increase the stitch size on the front lock with 2 to 4 clicks or depending on the yarn that you are using. Now knit the last row. Use the orange ruler and raise the opposite needles on the back bed. You have to observe the needle rule. You can see the needles up close. Now rotate the racking handle anti-clockwise to the transferring position. Take the transferring clock and set the lever to 2. Place the lock at right and slide it to the left. Hold the lock with both hands and push it towards the rails while sliding it. Now it should look like this, we have only one stitch to rehang. Use the orange ruler and put all empty needles on both beds out of working position. Rotate the racking handle clockwise to its upper position. If you have an even number of needles, you have to pay attention to the last needle when transferring. Now I'm knitting the one by one rib. Let's transfer the stitches to the front bed again. Raise the opposite needles on the front bed in working position. You can even raise more needles to the sides then put them out of working position after transferring the stitches. Now rotate the racking handle anti-clockwise to the transferring position. Take the transferring clock and set the lever to 3. When the lever is set to 3 the lock will transfer all stitches to the other bed without any exceptions. Place it on the left side and slide it. Now all stitches are transferred to the needles on the front bed. Always check for dropped stitches after transferring. Now I want to make a garter stitch. Rotate the racking handle clockwise to its upper position and raise the opposite needles on the back bed. Now rotate the racking handle anti-clockwise to the transferring position. Raise 3 extra needles to the left on the front bed and 3 needles to the right on the back bed of the machine. 
Now you can see up close. Set both locks to CX and increase the stitch size by one or two numbers or depending on the yarn that you're using. Remove the orange strippers and insert the black ones. The racking handle must remain in transferring position. Knit one row. Take the transferring clock, set the lever to 3 and transfer the stitches to the back bed. Knit one row, place the transferring clock on the left side and transfer the stitches to the front bed. Then repeat, knit one row and transfer the stitches to the back bed. Knit one row and transfer the stitches to the front bed. Now I have to tell you about the other settings. When the lever is set to 1 or to 5, the lock is transferring the stitches only where there is a pusher in working position. Some of these patterns you may find in the small stitch pattern book. Now I will show you my variation of this one. Everything is set, the lock will transfer the stitches only from the needles in the center. Now I'm knitting two rows, then I have to transfer the stitches in the center to the back bed. Exactly as shown in the pattern. This pattern is very easy to follow. Now you can see from a different point of view. And it looks like this. Now, after using and abusing the lock, we must clean it. By the way, do you remember this song? To clean it, I will use a cotton ball soaked in surgical spirit. After the alcohol evaporates, take a brush and clean all the lint from the channels. Then clean the brush and drop several drops of oil on it. Use the oily brush to spread the oil. The bristles of the brush will easily reach and lubricate the channels. Unfortunately, you can't subscribe to these channels, but you can subscribe to my channel. The lock mustn't be oily, it just needs a thin film of oil. The oil on the metal parts will protect them from corrosion. Clean the brush from the oil using a cotton ball soaked in surgical spirit. Then take a paper towel and wipe off all the excess oil from the lock. I'm using technical white oil. This is oil for industrial sewing machines. It is suitable for plastic parts and it is washable. I'm not advertising this brand and I can't recommend an oil to use. I'm just sharing my experience. Oh, and by the way, if the lock jumps in the knitting, carefully pull out the metal rod horizontally, then gently lift the lock and remove it. Take the metal rod and reinsert it into its socket. One of the reasons for jamming is not holding the lock firmly, or maybe you are using an inappropriate yarn type or stitch size setting. If two stitches are caught simultaneously when transferring, the stitch size is too big, and if stitches are dropped, then the stitch size is too small. That's all for today, thank you for watching, have a nice day and see you in my next video!